You talk about the power of your heart and the voice of the heart. You are so beautiful. Is the heart like a flame? Is it like a is it like a burning generator? To me. The heart is in our avatar. The heart is where the soul is. So when we talk about the heart, we're talking about the soul. So when we say uh, we open our heart, we're saying let's connect with our soul. Can't you see? You everything that I hope for. You everything I Such joy and happiness You breathe Such a joy and happiness You bring to me like a dream oh, A guide the light That shines in the night Heaven's gift to me So, heart is the house Where the soul resides in this avatar You are so beautiful And the soul has a voice, and does it speak, not necessarily through the area of the heart, but it speaks through the heart. Can you explain that a little more? Well, we are soul, so in the original blueprint, the soul is supposed to be at the driver's seat of our avatar. It should be the one that navigate through the experience and that's how it is normally but in the last 10,000 years we had this uh, little tiny implant in, this, in the left uh, brain uh, which is called ego which uh, purpose was for the intel uh, artificial intelligence, the reptilian intelligence to um, attempt to constantly distract us from being in our heart, being in our soul, so that uh, it can control us. And so the ego is nothing else but uh, a storyteller. It's a, it's, a, it's a device that is constantly creating past and future, past and future, past and future, and most of the time, if not always, is based on contraction. It's based on low frequencies, it's by, based on fear, uh, it's based on separation, it's based on sense of lack, uh, need of control. And sometimes it gives us uh, also um, positive uh, uh, emotions, but those emotions are, are part of the range of the emotion of the ego. And so when I'm joyful from the ego point of view, the joy that I'm experiencing and experiencing, in order to justify its existence, needs the opposite, which is anguish. So all the emotion that we experience through the ego have opposites. That's why it constantly swim from one to another, up and down. Uh, while when we have the soul that navigates, when we as soul navigate the experience, we don't have all these emotional swings. We have emotions beautiful emotion like joy, excitement, um, we have uh, um, appreciation, uh, enthusiasm, uh, uh, care and uh, 
and uh, but these are pure uh, emotions do not have a hidden agenda they don't come from lack they don't come from separation they don't come from the need of the idea of self-destruction because that's what the ego wants ultimately wants self-destruction so that is the difference between uh, the emotions of the soul and the emotions of the ego in order to go back to the original blueprint to start a new cycle in this amazing journey called earth we need to switch from the ego being the driver of our seat the soul needs to be there so that uh, our is our essence that is operating so it's very important that we do so and so right now we are in the next few months and maybe a couple of years we are addressing all those ego situations that we've been uh, uh, creating and manifesting in our life for thousands of years generation after generation all these ego manifestations that are mostly dark are coming to the surface so that we can look at all of them that is why I created a, a record an album called Unfolding Secrets a few years ago because I knew that this, coming was, this time was coming where all the secrets needs to unfold so all this, the shadows needs to come to the table so we can look at them and then we can make a choice do we still want to play the game of the shadows or do we want to move and play the game of the new cycle and um, that's what's happening right now and if we want to go uh, towards the new game we will have to uh, look at this uh, beautiful shadows that gave us amazing experience feel appreciation for what they given to us and then let them go through love that's the only way where we can pass through this uh, phase uh, for as long as we keep uh, uh, go, uh, judging the light as good and the dark as bad we keep validating the game we keep validating the battle we keep validating the war between good and, and bad the eternal perpetual battle between light and dark uh, which many movies uh, sponsor all the time which never ends uh, it, that, it, it never ends just because we are keeping uh, validating it by taking part, by judging it so what we need to do now is um, to come to a level of consciousness where we appreciate the game in all his expressions so we appreciate the light we appreciate the darkness we appreciate the good the bad and the evil <laughs> and the ugly and we appreciate all because it's just a game and we are just having an amazing experience so it's only through that appreciation but we can pass through the duality game and go to the next to the next dream and that's the love that we need to embrace right now the love of appreciating and not judging everything appreciating everything for what it is if we were to function at a fuller capability how would you think it would be different than it is now well, we are going. We are going soon to go back to function in full capability. For those who decided at this uh, uh, quite intense transition in time, decided to continue the evolutionary uh, offer that uh, Mother Earth give us to gives to us uh, in a matter of few years, maybe a decade or maybe less, uh, we will uh, eventually uh, reactivate our. Uh, avatar which means uh, our DNA will be completely active uh, it means our pineal gland will be completely active uh, it means that uh, our uh, ego, the ego won't be anymore part of the avatar because the ego is a, is a huge impediment for 
uh, the human experience. Uh, it, it creates distraction constantly uh, and it gave us uh, wonderful experiences because we learn a lot from those distractions but it's not part, it's an implant that is not part of the original avatar. So once that is removed we are now completely in sync uh, with both the internal avatar and the outside Mother Earth and what all uh, what it has to offer. It's going to be an amazing, amazing experience. Yes, we are all evolving uh, in some manner or some other. Um, there is not really uh, a better soul or a more you can say there is a more advanced soul, but uh, outside from the duality game, there is not hierarchy. So, uh, there might be souls that are having experience in the low frequencies. And so, they are experiencing a higher level of forgetfulness. And so, they appear to be less evolved. Mm. Uh, because their purpose is to uh, embrace a, a higher level of forgetfulness so that they can have uh, quite a more separative uh, experience because there is a lot to be learned from that, all right? And there are some souls that have a, this, a different purpose and so uh, based on their purpose they, um, they uh, calibrate the level of remembering and forgetfulness that they come to the operating system to have an experience with. So uh, for some soul it's important to remember a little bit more and so they do and for some some soul it's important to remember nothing and just start from from the really from the bottom. But that doesn't make a soul more or less advanced. It just ha uh, just soul that have different uh, purposes, different intent, uh, and so they choose to synchronize, to tune in with different level of forgetfulness or remembering. But as far as Marco Misenato, how, what experiences have helped shape you and helped you to remember and to evolve to this point? So far, uh, wonderful experiences uh, since I came on Earth, and much earlier than that. Um, my intent as a soul is to be of support you know, right at this time, on this uh, transitioning time, this very intense transitioning time of humans, which is, could be compared very much like the caterpillar that become a butterfly. So a quite 360 degree change. Okay, so uh, part of me sign up for being here uh, to assist, and to do so, I came here in a, in a way that I didn't completely forget, forgot everything. Uh, I forgot some, but I also maintained some level of uh, of remembering because I had some standards and some purposes that I have to deal with. Um, so, uh, of course, then you dig in deeply into the physical experience and then uh, for a moment you forget, you allow yourself to uh, define yourself by the game so you can really play the game and learn from it and understand how it is and then when the, the, the time of your purpose approaches then you start to re remember it again uh, but now you can um, uh, have uh, empathy because if I come here and I remember everything and I don't experience for example fear I cannot help you if I don't understand when you say I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean so I need to experience fear I need to experience sadness um, separation whatever it, the game involves so that then I can relate with you and so when I am here to give you support, uh, I can know how, because 
I had with experience. You're right? So that's why it's very valuable to have moments in our life of forgetfulness. Wow, that's really powerful. You're making a reference to a canvas as being source and, and, ca and the colors and the lines and the textures. How, how do we understand and make it more, uh, more visible to people that we're all one? Who is it that judge? It's not the soul, it's the ego. The ego judges. Um, judge, being judgmental uh, creates uh, polarity, dualism, and creates separation. Uh, one of the things that we need to go back to is to be neutral. And to be neutral, it means, it doesn't mean to be passive, it doesn't mean to be uh, indifferent, it means uh, not allow our emotional charges to define us and to drive us. So, neutrality or non-judging non means uh, not uh, allow the other to be free to be wherever he needs to be in any given moment without me getting reactive to by labeling as right, as wrong, as good, as bad, as light, as dark. All right, so yes, we can observe and discern and so make a decision about the situation but without the emotional charges that ju being judgmental uh, carry on, you know? So when we do not respond, we don't react through our emotional, we don't get lost into the ego. Because the emotion, low emotions, the re reactive emotion, the defensive mechanism, it's all ego. The, the soul doesn't judge, it doesn't react emotionally. The soul uh, chooses through uh, discernment, through resonance and dissonance. However, whether he feels resonance or he feels dissonance, his love remains full. Okay, that is the difference, that's a key difference. So we need to learn to go back to the original love, which is a love that is the celebration of free will, is not judgmental. That's one, or one other thing that we need to embrace. We need to go back. We need to let go of this love that we've been experiencing so far until now, which is a beautiful love. It gave us so much emotions and so much experiences, but it was a, based on emotional swings, up and down, up and down. And so if I love you, I need you. Mm -hmm. If I love you, I worry about you. If I love you, I sacrifice for you. If I love you, uh, I judge you. And if you don't behave in the way I feel is right or wrong, my love diminish. So it's very conditional. So and this is the love that we've been uh, experiencing the last thousands of years and is also very much reinforced from society, you know. Most of the movies and the books, the romantic books are all based on this needy love where I cannot live without you, uh, and, uh, and and I got also conditions, and you know you better you know be like this or be like that, otherwise I get hurt, I get offended, or I you know I get upset, uh, and so when we find ourselves in front of someone that loves us through this uh, uh, reptilian mind love, all of a sudden our freedom diminished. That's a paradox. If I am in front of someone that loves me, my sense of freedom 
of being who I am should amplify, it should have diminished, right? So that is the love that we've been experiencing until now, which is based on separation and scarcity and, and, uh, and fear and all that. And now if we want to go past that bridge and go to the new dream, we will have to let go uh, this uh, reptilian, uh, luciferian kind of loving and embrace the real love, which is the celebration of free will where I say I love you and you are free. Yeah, I get it. You're, and you're also very humble as well. And I think that it's important for all of us to remain humble so that we can stay in this experience. Otherwise, we'll, we'll just not want to be here. And that's one of the things somebody told me was, if, if I told you where you've been, you wouldn't want to be here. So, in a way, it is important to remain present here. So, that's between me.